Welcome back. I figured I would continue Mythology Monday, even though we're doing this remotely now. And I'm going to be telling the story of Icarus, Daedalus and Icarus today. I think I've told a lot of classes of this story already, but we're going to be translating it in Latin 4 and 5. So I just thought I'd make uh, the video available to all the classes if you want to get a little bit of mythology in. So here's our painting we're going to be looking at today. This is by Pieter Brugel famous Dutch artist. This is called Landscape with the Fall of Icarus. Now, if you if you look at this, it might be actually pretty difficult to find where Icarus is. You know, he's not flying around in the sky. Um, in fact, all the only thing to show you where he is is eh, his legs right there. So there Icarus is at the bottom. Uh, Bruegel, he liked to, he was the first guy that really did landscape painting. So, uh, if you're fond of those, you can thank him. And he always had peasants in there. And this is actually pretty close to the myth. Uh, as Icarus falls, there's all these peasants farming and fishing and going, going along with their day. And they don't seem to care that there's this man flying above them and falling to his death. So let's, let's go back and talk about how this happened. Why this boy grew some wings or made some wings and how he fell into the ocean. And to do that, we got to go way back. We got to go back years and years before Icarus. And once upon a time, there was a king named Minos that ruled the island of Crete. And Minos, uh, he just got married, but he wasn't going to be king. He was a prince. He had some brothers that were ahead of him uh, to be heir. And so Minos prays to Poseidon and promises that he will sacrifice to him a white bull, the most fantastic, fabulous, beautiful bull on the entire island if he'll make him king. And of course, Poseidon, being a connoisseur of bulls, said, sure, let's do it. And so he agreed. He makes Minos the king. He kills off his brothers. But when it comes time for Minos to sacrifice this beautiful bull, he can't do it. All right, he, he just loves the bull so much. I mean, look at this thing. It's beautiful. And so instead, he sacrifices a different bull to Poseidon, hoping that will uh, that will be all right. But as you know from mythology, yeah, that's not going to be all right. So Minos, uh, he gets he gets he gets uh, punished in a rather odd fashion because Poseidon goes to his his buddy Cupid and tells him to make the queen fall in love with that white bull, fall madly head over heels in love with that bull. And of course, being a beautiful bull, uh, she really couldn't resist him. And so uh, she thinks like, all right, well, you know, I'm a human. He's a bull. How is this thing going to work? You know, it, we're, we're totally different species. And she's thinking about it. She thought, you know what? There's a great inventor that lives on our island, a guy named Daedalus. And if anyone could figure out a way for me and this, this bull to, uh, to have a relationship, it would be Daedalus. So she goes to Daedalus and says, hey, I'm in love with the bull. And uh, Daedalus at first was, you know, kind of understandably creeped out by that, but he knew that she was the queen and she had ordered him and he was a great inventor. And so he thinks about it and he says, listen, I can make you an awesome cow costume. And in this cow costume, you'll be able to interact with this bull just as if you were a cow. And so he crafts this amazing bull or cow costume for the queen. And guess what? Nine months later, they have a beautiful baby half man half bull minotaur. Well, uh, when Minos sees this thing, he pretty quickly realizes that it's not his own and pieces together, oh my god, my wife and uh, bull had a baby together. And he knew there was only one man who could have helped her do this, and he knew that Daedalus did it. And so he arrests Daedalus and forces Daedalus to construct a massive labyrinth, a massive maze beneath the uh, temple at Knossos. And years and years, Daedalus toils making this labyrinth for King Minos. And then the story, there's several versions of the story. Either he gets thrown into the labyrinth with his son and has to escape, or afterwards he's imprisoned in a tower um, and basically awaiting execution uh, for, uh, what, for helping the queen get 
pregnant with the Minotaur. But either way, while he's uh, confined away on the island of Crete, he decides he's going to he's going to do something rather uh, rather bold. He's going to try and be the first humans to fly. He's going to construct a wing suit, if you will, uh, to fly off the island of Crete. Since Minos has a big army and navy, he won't be able to escape by ground or by sea. And so he collects the feathers from birds that are flying around the tower or the island. And with wax and twine, he constructs a, a, a wingsuit for his son and himself. And once he finishes this suit, he tells his son Icarus, listen buddy, gotta take it easy with these wings, alright? We're not birds, alright? These are man-made constructions. They can fall apart. They can be destroyed rather easily. So what I want you to do when you get these wings on, I don't want you to fly too low. Because if you fly too low, the spray, the water from the ocean will wet down the wings and the wax will start to fall apart and you'll plunge into the ocean and drown. And he tells the sun, but I also, I don't want you flying too high, all right? If you fly too high, you'll get close to the sun, your max, your wax on your wings will melt, and your feathers will fall off, and again, you'll fall to your death. And Icarus tells his father, don't worry, Dad, I got this. I wouldn't dare do either of those things. And so he straps on the wings, and they start flying across the sea. And for a while, everything's going fine, but Icarus, you know, he's just been handed uh, the keys to his dad's Porsche, and so he wants to test the limits of these things. So he starts going faster and faster. And his father, Daedalus, tells him, slow down, son. This is going to end really poorly for you. But Icarus, he, he, can't, he can't help himself. He's having too much fun. So he starts diving down real low, skimming over the waves. Again, Daedalus tells him, son, you're going too low. Stay with me and you'll be safe. But again, Icarus ignores his father and climbs higher and higher into the sky. And as he approaches the sun... The, uh, the wax on his wings begins to melt, and poor Icarus falls headfirst into, uh, well, into the ground. And that is the end of poor Icarus. Um, this was a story that, uh, you know, there's many interpretations of what, uh, what Ovid was trying to say here. But many people see it as a kind of reinforcement of the idea of the golden mean. The Greeks had this idea that you never want to be... Uh, to, you don't want to do anything in excess or do something um, too little. Uh, you needed to do, be right there in the middle. You always wanted to be moderate in every in all of your actions and all of your thoughts and all of your deeds. And uh, this was kind of their warning to those who didn't follow that maxim. So anyways, Daedalus and Icarus, it's been repeated in uh, you know popular culture ever since. It's off, Icarus is often used in like a fantasy and sci-fi for names of things. But uh, there you go, Daedalus and Icarus. And our lovely, again, picture by Pieter Brugel, Landscape with the Fall of Icarus. All right, I'll see you guys next week.